7-2 ellipses and circles. We have the equation of an ellipse when the major axis of the ellipse is horizontal. In other words, when you go from left to right, horizontally across the ellipse, that is going to be farther than if you went up and down. This is called the minor axis. So we have the major axis, right here, major, and we have the minor axis. And on this one, we know that the major axis is going horizontally because A, which will usually be the bigger value between A and B, is under the X. So X's go right and left, Y's go up and down. So the major axis is going along the X axis. Now the points that connect the major axis that are on the end points, those are called the vertices. And we have letters that we associate with these uh, distances. But A is the distance from the center to a vertice. And A is over here also. But when you put the values in the equation, you square A. Now the distance from the center to a covertice along the minor axis, there's a covertice, we give that the letter B. Now it's the same thing over here, except A is under the Y, B is under the X. So the minor axis is going along the X, the major axis is going along the Y. So vertices, those are along the major axis. Covertices, those are along the minor. The focal points, the distance from the center to a focal point, which is about right there, let's say, is given the letter C. And there's another focal point on the other side, right there. So the vertices, the focal points, and the center are always in line with each other. And there's a vertice. And then these over here, this is, uh, these are the covertices of this ellipse. Now there is a relationship between A, B, and C. In other words, distance from center to vertice, center to covertice, and center to focal point. C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. Eccentricity for an ellipse, either one, where C squared equals A squared minus B squared, the eccentricity of an ellipse is E equals C over A. So eccentricity is given a value. Now if E is equal to zero, then we have a perfect circle. And we could have an equation like this. We could have X minus two squared over four plus Y minus one squared over four is equal to one. Now this is kind of in the form of an ellipse, but this is really a circle. Because from the center, from the center to one, you would go four to the right, four to the left, four, uh, excuse me, two to the right, two to the left, two up and two down. Well, that's a circle, that's not an ellipse. So these two have to be different to have an ellipse. Now, if you do have a perfect circle, then the C, C squared, equals A squared minus B squared. Well, one of these is the A, one of these is the B, and for a circle, they would be the same. So you have four minus four, C would be zero. So E would be zero over uh, four, which is zero. So if you have a perfect circle, the eccentricity is zero. Now if you have this crazy, crazy ellipse that's really skinny, something like that, uh, then that has a very high eccentricity because it's very far from being a circle. Graph the ellipse. We have x plus two squared, y minus one squared, and those are over nine and over four. Identify the center. Well, the center is negative two, one. So we always think opposite. If this is a two, we have negative two. If this is a y minus one, it's one. So negative two, one, negative two, one. That puts us right there. Uh, and then, well, let's graph it before we answer all these other questions. Uh, from here, from the center, we go right and left three because the nine is under the x. So right three and left three. And then from the center, we go up and down two, because this is really, this is the b squared, and we want the b. So we go up and down two from the center. And the reason we're going up and down is because the four is under the y. Well, now here's the ellipse. We can actually graph it already. There's not really much to graphing an ellipse. And these are, since the longer axis is horizontal, there's a vertice here and here. And these are covertices, covertice and a covertice. So the vertices are, uh, let's see, we got one, one, 
and the other one is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, 1. So there's the vertices. So I have the center, the vertices. How about the focal points? We have c squared equals a squared minus b squared. It's minus because in the equation there's a plus. c squared is equal to 9 minus 4. Now 9 is a squared and uh, 4 is b squared. So we have 9 minus 4. c squared equals 5. c is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. Now here's, uh, here's the center and the focal points, the center and the vertices all line up. So the focal points are going to be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5 and then they're all going to be lined up where y is 1. So then we have comma 1. Uh, the focal points, the major axis is uh, y equals 1. The minor axis is x equals negative 2. So here's the major axis, here's the minor axis, and find the eccentricity. Well, if we go back here, eccentricity is c over a. So we have the c is square root of 5, so eccentricity is square root of 5 over the a is 3. So square root of 5 over 3. Graph the ellipse, and we need to put it in a form that we can actually recognize. We need to uh, perform, uh, we need to complete the square on both the x and the y variables. We have 4 times x squared plus 6x plus something. So we need to get this a right here to be a 1. In order to do that, we have to factor a 4 out of the x variables. Then we have plus y squared minus 10y plus something. And that's equal to 3 plus something plus something, because we're going to add two different values. We're going to complete the square on both variables. Let's take 6 divided by 2, that's 3. 3 squared is 9. So we're adding 9 to this side, but we're actually we're adding 9 on the inside of the parentheses, I mean, but we're actually adding 36 to the left-hand side, so we need to add 36 over here. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 squared is 25, and we are adding 25 to this side. Well, now we have 4 times x plus 3 squared plus y minus 5 squared is equal to, we have uh, 39 plus 25, 4, carry the 1, uh, it's what, 664, that's nice, 64. And then uh, we will have to divide everybody by 4 because when we have an ellipse, we usually like to have that equal to 1 like we do here. They're always equal to 1. So we need to not divide by 4, but we need to divide by 64, actually, to get a 1 over here. So divide by 64. We have x plus 3 squared. Uh, that's going to be 1 16th, so we have a 16 there. y minus 5 over 64, and then that's equal to 1. The center now is negative 3, 5. And I notice I'm going to have to go right and left eight units. So we should probably go maybe by twos. Twos might work. So let's go uh, two here. So we have negative three, five, two, four, five. There's negative three, five right there. And uh, I'll have to go right and left four. That's not bad. One, two, three, four. That's right here. And one, two, three, four. That's here. But then I'll have to go up and down eight units. So here's two, four, six, eight up there, and two, four, six, eight down there. And now we have the ellipse. I'll draw it as best I can with this pen tablet. There we go. We have the center. How about the vertices? The vertices are along the major axis. So we have a vertice going up and down. That's the longer distance. That ended up being eight units uh, up and down. And we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. So the vertice is negative 3, right? Negative 2, negative 3, what did I say, 13? Let's check that again. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. And then negative 3, negative 3. Negative 3, negative 3. So we have the center, the vertices, the focal points. We have c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. In other words, just... Uh, when we subtract, don't get a negative value. So we're going to need 64 minus 16. C squared equals 
64 minus 16, that is 48. So C is plus or minus, let's say I, I can take out a 4, or actually a 16, so 4 squared of 3. Now that's going up and down. Now the distance from the center to the focus is C. So we're going up and down, and that's going to affect the Y of the center. So the focal points are negative 3, 5, plus or minus 4 square root of 3. So we have the focus, the major axis is uh, x equals negative 3. Then the minor axis is on the line y equals 2, 4, 5. Yeah, because that 5 is the y value of the center. So major, we got minor. The eccentricity, going back to this right here, is c over a. So the eccentricity is, we have the c, 4 squared of 3 over, and the a is actually 8. So 4 squared of 3 over 8. Graph the ellipse. Let's take a 144 out of the x squared. So we need 144 times x squared plus, we need 1152 divided by 144, which is 8x. And then we have plus something. We have plus. We need a 25 out of the y, which is going to leave us y squared minus 12y plus something. And that's going to be equal to 396 plus something plus something. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So we're going to add 16 to this to the parentheses. Uh, but now we got to find out what did we add to the left side. 144 times 16 is 2,304. And then we have 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 squared is 36. And 25 times 36 is 900. Well, we have 144 times x plus 4 squared. And then plus 25 times y minus 6 squared. And that's equal to 3,600. Well, we need ellipses to equal 1. So let's divide everybody by 3,600. Now, as it turns out, 144 times 25 is 3,600. And what we get is x plus 4 squared over 25 plus y minus 6 squared over 144 is equal to 1. The center is negative 4, 6. So let's see which ones have negative 4, 6. So our choices are A and B. But when we look at the numbers down below, we would go up and down 12 and right and left 5, which means we're going up and down more than we're going right and left. So this is more of a vertical ellipse. And here's your vertical ellipse right here. So the answer is letter B.